Hello, Shirley Peters here. How are you going? Um, Happy New Year. Um, we've had uh, the fires in Australia. We still have the fires. Um, a few, one in particular, has been threatening our property, and we've had two instances where we've actually driven away for the night um, because of the fact that the wind might change and the fire might overtake us. Um, but that said, we are now um, in a cool day. We've had a dump of rain two nights ago. It not, not, wasn't widespread. We were just lucky. We had, we had a little spot of uh, cloud over, over us and we had some rain. And uh, looking down at the dam now, there's a certain amount of water in it. And the, that means the pump's working, which means we are getting some water onto the garden and we have some water now to defend the house with, should the fires come back. Um, just, I just want to put out my commiserations to everyone who's lost family. There's been oh, <clears throat> somewhere between 20 and 30 lives lost, uh, which is unbelievable. That's the worst tragedy of all. But the other thing is 600 plus houses lost and uh, untold stock animals. So uh, it gets to a point where you just can't think about all the, um, the sad things. So that said, um, my thoughts go out to everyone who's lost um, uh, property or people. It's just awful. Right, so what I'm going to do today is something a little bit different in so much as I'm going to load up my acrylic palette in, the same, in a similar way to, uh, as I do with my uh, watercolour. But I use acrylics and I put them in a pot like this and believe it or not, they stay wet. And they stay wet for months. I have picked them up after I have not used them for two months and they're still perfectly wet. That said, I can't be sure it'll happen at your place. <laughs> so I'll show you what I do and this works for me. Um, but please to, you know, don't, don't um, give me too much of a hard time if your paints end up drying up. One of the tricks to the trade is you must keep using them. So, oh, I must admit, mine, a couple of months I hadn't used them and they were still okay. But I do suggest you always use them. If you're, going to, if you're going to do a lot of painting, this is the way to manage acrylic paint. And I'll turn the camera now and show you that I'm going to be squeezing the whole tube, whole tube into each one of these trays. This is a little box I bought from Bunnings, uh, which is our hardware shop. It's designed to put little trinkets in or whatever. These ones actually come out. It's better if you can get ones where they don't come out. Come out. I have got, I've got a bigger box here, a, a, an older one that I've used over the years. And these, these are permanent um, fixtures. They don't come out at all. Okay, here's the painting I wish to do today. And uh, it's sort of one of my, I think my favorite types of paintings is in so much as it's got a lot of black in the foreground and um, beautiful blue colors behind. But I'm going to be doing a large, a large um, canvas of which I will now take off the plastic.
that's better. Perfect size. Now I'm going to pretend I'm outside doing plain air, which I will be doing soon. So I'm just having a bit of a warm up and I'll show you how I do, I use these paints when they're in the, um, already mixed up in the box. I like to have a few plates. Sometimes I use paper plates, sometimes these are plastic plates. And they're just the right size. I just want small and I am only mixing two colors at once or three, maybe. I'm going to draw in the actual shapes, but using a pale brown and a little bit of red, which I'm just going to dip into and um, roughly rough out my painting like this. And use a bit of water. Now come around. Probably going to change the layout a little bit. I tend to do that to suit myself like that. There's a big mountain behind, which will go up about there. I won't bother putting the clouds in the sky. I can do that later. I don't need to draw those in. Of this, what I've done there is the highlighted side will be about there and the dark rocky area will be about there. Oops. When I have a clean brush, quite happy to dip straight into those paints. If I have a dirty brush, I do the opposite. I, I don't dip in. I, I get a knife and I pull out, pull a little bit out and put it on the plate. Okay. So I can see there's a little sign back there. I don't know if that'll end up going in or not. There's a big tree here, which will take up a lot of the sky on this side of the um, painting. Over here, we've got beach scenario happening. I might bring that down a little bit, bring that down. So there's just a small difference between the beach at the back and these rocks here at the front. Okay. So what I love to do first when I have a painting like this is um, the blues. So I will See that that um, plate will in, will now end up being um, it'll go dry because I've got I don't have enough paint on it for it to stay wet. I'll let it dry and I'll use it for my browns and warm colours. So just using a palette knife like that, I shall choose a cerulean blue and wipe the knife and there. So they're my paints for this particular um, section of the painting. I'm going to use a nice big fat brush because it's a big painting. I'm going to just dip it into water. I'll close the lid on the paints. Good habit to get into to keep the lid closed especially if you've just got a section that you're going to play around with. So I'm going to start with a nice amount of ultramarine blue on my palette, mixed with the cerulean actually, about 50-50 now that I look at it closely. The sky is lighter than the sea in this case. So adding a fair bit of water to weaken it down. I'll go right down into the, because it's not watercolour, this doesn't matter. I'll go right down into the um, landscape area, the, the trees. The fun of this is that you get the paint on really fast 
and it dries quickly and you can start going back over it fairly soon. So this is what acrylic is good for. Now I'm using a fairly cheap quality paint here so as per usual it's a little bit dip more difficult to handle than good quality paint but it's just to show you that it can be done. You don't need to go all out with expensive paints. This brush is not expensive. You can get these at any old art shop. I'll put a link below to all these materials so you'll be able to see where they, hopefully to get them on Amazon. Um, using my affiliate link program where I get a tiny, I think <laughs> a couple of cents from each sale. So just gonna, not going to worry too much. I'm just going to put this blue all the way around. The actual image has a fair bit of um, green in it at this stage, but I won't be doing that subtlety yet. I'm just going to make this a background colour. Over the back here, there's blue as well. So I'll put that in. Okay. Getting down here, it goes a little bit lighter. Now towards the dark, the front, it's going to get very dark. So I'll come back to my, oops, big blob of it. Ultramarine blue, where the shadow is for that tree. Comes out to a little bit of paler there. And then back to the strong blue in the foreground. Believe it or not, blue in the shadows here of the rocks. Now, can you imagine how fast this would be drying if you're outside in the open? It's drying in my studio pretty quickly. Okay, now. While I'm mixing up some more colours, that will dry and I'll come back over it with um, another layer of the blues. And, I've, and uh, the other thing that happens when you do that, you go through that and you, you realise, oh, I'm going to need some more, I'm going to need yellow now. I'm going to have to put some yellow into that blue and put, I have to put some white in. And you can either do it while it's still wet or you can wait for it to dry and do an overpainting. I'm going to do both. Someone needs to stop messaging me. Phone keeps going off, sorry. So. Oh, just a little bit awkward here because I'm trying to get, do it all in the middle of the, of the um, screen. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of yellow and put some yellow onto that, to add into that cerulean. And while I'm at it, clean, the, clean my spatula. I'll do a little bit of green. Throw out the right thing. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to start with a bit of green going straight in back there. I'm going to bring a little bit of yellow into it just for the fun. This is probably way too early to be adding these details, but sometimes I can't help myself. I'll wash the brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of the white. So 
But one of the fun things that this does, it frees you up to, to use more paint than you normally would. When you've got a large, when you've got a large quantity of paint like this, you're more freer to experiment and, and play with it a bit. So I'm just going to put some white in here. I'm deliberately doing this while it's wet, just to see what sort of a um, pattern I can get with the wet on wet. Just for the fun of it, I might just put some. Waves. Now I've got clouds up here, so don't really need green in the sky, but I'm going straight into the into the um, blue, the uh, white. Okay, so these have got, these particular clouds have got circular tops and kind of grey blue bases. I'll mix a bit of yellow and green in with those just to give them a little bit of a grey colour. I can come over those later. That top there isn't quite white enough, but that's all right. I can come over that a little bit later, a bit more but over here. So basic. Flat at the bottom, round on top. That's a, a one formula. There's many different ways to paint clouds. Okay, I've got green on my palette at the moment and there's lots of green behind here on these trees. Oop. Try and get rid of that white. White can be very um, bossy sort of paint, it gets into everything lightens things when you don't want them lightened. So don't know how I'll go with this green. I'm just going to play it by ear. At this early stage of a painting, you can just add color. You refine it later on when you get closer to the end. Sometimes you can leave, uh, you'll do stuff, you'll do um, strokes and things at this early stage and they'll end up looking really good. So you might want to always be can, open to leaving what you've done. You don't always have to go over it three or four times, as I tend to. All right. I'm just going to mix that green up and I'm just going to reflect that down into the water. Just experimenting with the brush stroke here. I'm not necessarily wanting to go sideways because I know it will scrape out. A little bit of reflection going straight down there. Of course there are various highlights that I want to put in up here and that will reflect those. While it's still wet, I'm going to add a bit more white into the blue. I'll mix up a lovely big amount of light blue, using all those blues together actually. Come in over that side. Oops. Now going down to green at the front. Blend it in. I'm just cleaning up my palette really.
Right. Now I've still got blue over here, so I'm going to come down there in the background and go from blue down to white. very pale blue back there. And cerulean is the main colour I want for that area. I'll take the blue right up into the um, into the land form there because I'm not quite sure yet what I'll do. So just to get the, the uh, canvas covered I'll take it right up there. Blend it down to the lighter colour down here. Okay. So a couple of things I want to do, I want to soften up those clouds with a, um, a bit of a rag and by rubbing them back you'll end up losing your brush strokes which is what I want to do. I don't want to see brush strokes up there in that cloud. So I'm going to wipe it out with a rag. Same here. Just a personal choice. Okay, so that's a start. While that's drying, I'm going to add the brown uh, rocks coming down here. And to tell you the truth, what I could also do is add some yellow to this plate where I shall get it. What color yellow? I think I'll stick with the lemon yellow. Actually, just for the fun of it, Oops. I'll just put my brush down here. I'll just get some of this other yellow out as well. Chrome, we used to call that chrome yellow, but I think it's called cadmium yellow now. And just going to put in a little touch of the grassy green burge that's over this side of the mound. I think this is what you call a breakwater. As it comes forward, I'm going to mix in a little bit more of the warmer yellow. It's not necessarily in the, in the picture, I'm just doing it for creative reasons. And I'm just going to run it over like that. In the background there, there is sand, which I can come in later with a bit of white and add that in. I'll pretend it goes back there, but I just can't tell at this stage if it does or not. So while I'm thinking, I'll just fix my brush. Um, it's a little bit awkward, but this breakwater ends up being dead level with the top of, okay, I'll grab some white. Top of the breakwater there is kind of dead level with the land over the other side. And I think I have to stick with that. So I'll just add this in. The sun hitting this side is making it lighter. It's one excuse. <laughs> now, I'll mix a little bit of that white together with, the, with this over here to make that a little bit sandier, a little bit warmer and sandier. Of course, back here. To balance it. A couple of little lighter pieces here where the rocks are caught the sun. Like that. Now I'm cleaning the brush off very well, as much as I can, because I want to blend that sky back in. Beginning to think now that I'm not happy with that sharp edge, so 
before I took out the, um, the brushes inside, now I'm going to take out that sharp edge. And what I will do, that will set me up for coming back later when it's dry and I don't have to try and demolish a sharp edge. I can add an edge, but it's hard to take one out. So I'm just going to lighten that up like that. Okay. Now, I'll grab another one out and I'm going to do the very dark, um, I'm going to do the very dark rocks at this stage. So I'll just clean a couple of palette knives. What did I call them before? Spatulas. <laughs> That's what I'm using them as a spatula. I'm just lifting out. So I've got the burnt, the burnt umber end. Clean that off. I'm going to mix it with a bit of violet this time, I think. So, so notice how generous I can be with the paint when it's. Um, I said this before, but I just can't emphasize it enough. If I'm squeezing it out of a tube, I'm squeezing tiny little bits, treating it like watercolor. But if I'm spading it out and putting it onto a usable palette like this, I know I'm gonna have much more fun. I'm gonna have more freedom to add more paint, physically, quantity wise, more paint. Now, I'll put that in there. I'm gonna stick with my large brush and one of the beauties of having a large brush is that it stops you trying to do detail. So, so these, these, um, the texture that this paint is at this stage, I don't have to do anything about um, watering it down. It's just right as it is. So I'm just going to run that out into the ocean a little bit. Interestingly enough, um, I kind of have to stay very high here. This is the first time I've actually added the structure in, on this and I do think I have to come quite high and now come down low. This, this edge has to go high, even higher, higher than I originally drew it. It's interesting how things like that, you don't realise what you're doing until you start filling in the lights and darks and then you can see, oh, hang on, that's not quite right. So, as you can see, I'm applying this nice and thickly. And now that I've got this dark in, I can see I have to come a lot lighter here. So it gives you tonal, getting all the colours in, gives you that tonal comparison. And because it's acrylic, it's going to dry quickly. And therefore, you're going to have plenty of time to um, go over it and get those tones corrected if they need to be. And you don't have to worry about waiting a day or two for the oil paint to dry or scraping it off, which is what you end up having to do, I do with oil paint if I make an error. And you end up wasting a lot too, that way. Right. So, getting there. Might even take it to an extreme area over there. Now, while I've got that beautiful dark colour mixed, I'll, I'll add it to the background here on the right hand side because the sun's coming from the left. Put it down in there. Right up. Wash the brush. I've got a lovely shadow to come down here, which um, will be 
quite interesting. I could do that now with a bit of the purple. I'll just go straight into purple. I'll wet it down a little bit so it's a little bit runnier than what it is there. I'll dig into, just lighten it up a little bit with the cerulean blue. So let's see what colour I get here. Yep, I think that's probably better. So just going back over that area I painted before. And it's the um, shadow of the tree that's coming out here. That is forming a bit of a pattern with the movement of the water. And I'm drying up my drying my brush and I'm just going to do a little bit of wave movement going into this area. It's quite interesting watching water. You, you do often get a zigzag. Just going to add a touch of white into this on this side. And I'll put some, just putting my brush on the side and swiping through that white to make it look a little bit more wave-like. And I'll come back over. Hmm, no, I won't. I'll come back a little bit, a little bit off, like that. Yeah. Okay. Just put some um, cerulean blue in there, and adding some white to it now. Just to lighten it up. I don't think I ever get a painting done where honey doesn't decide to explode into um, indignant barking. Okay, now having applied that, I'll come in with my brush and play around with it. So I want to put some stripes in here to draw it out. Down here, into this area too. Come back over this in a little while with some dark shapes. Okay. back over that. Hmm. Just go back into the green again.
Mix some yellow with that green. See if I can bring that back down. Right in there. And then I want to go back into there. Yeah, I think I'll fill that in. Okay. Out here, very thinly. Mm -hmm. This is where you end up with those lovely cr cross marks. I'm letting the, the brush itself make its own marks now. I'll blend that in backwards. And again. And just up here I'm going to start doing the same pattern so that it blends in together. gets to a stage where you can't really see what's happening. Then there's some yellow. Just put some yellow on the brush and bring it down like that. What that's telling the eye is that there's some still water in the distance. Yet up, the, up here it's got a bit of wind atta attacking, attached to it. Okay. Pretty important to get that. I half close my eyes, I don't realise I'm not getting it quite vertical, but you must get those dead straight down. Okay. That's good fun at this stage. I'll just add a little bit of white over here, I think, if it's dry. Yes, it's dry. So I'm just going to... Lighten that up again in a sort of a haphazard way because it's going to be totally obliterated by that tree, I think. Just a couple of little patterny lines on that too to make it look like it's not totally without breeze. Right. There comes a stage that once you put patterns in like this, you have to sort of stop and leave them. You might not have them right, but it's better that they be fresh and untouched, unfiddled with and wrong, than over and over and over worked to try and get it exactly right. So it is what it is at this stage. When it's dead dry, I could come back and maybe make some corrections into that and I'll definitely be putting some more rocks in and things like that. But I'll wait till it's a bit drier, I think. <laughs> it's not until I look at it that I make a decision. Um, there's some beautiful, 
what have I got here? I'll put some red on my on the plate here and I'll grab some white from I'll use another brush I'll try and get that whitey that, that spare white that I've got mixed in with that blue I'm going to mix that with that red to knock back to get I'm looking for a sort of a brown color that's going to go in here I now need a fair bit of white so I'll put that in and wiping my brush I'll throw in a bit of warmth so let's see what I can come up with with that red blue underneath coming up yeah. okay I call that a cool gray and it's not too bad for that walking track that's behind there so I'll just see how I go adding that in yep not too bad it's actually going to need to have things like stones pebbles The hardest thing with this, you've got to keep remembering not to go dabbing your brush into that paint. And preferably, keep, keep, if you're outside, keep the lid closed. It's when, when it's exposed to air that it's more likely to dry. While the lid's closed, it'll stay like that for ages. This is not quite dry yet, so I won't go too ambitiously into this area. I'll be coming over those colors again. That's just another background. I like to layer the colors. So can I use this one while I'm here in the distance? I'll just see if it works. It's not too bad. It's a little bit dull, but it's, it's got that sort of dirty sand look. Um, now, taking advantage of some blues I have out I have some blues out. I have some. I'll take some of those off there. I'll take that blue off there. I've got the orange, the yellows here, which I'll add into the. What I'm looking for here is um, quite a dull green at the background there. So I've got this color I've just mixed for this pathway, mix it with a bit more yellow, a bit more blue and just keep, because there's a fair bit of white already in that, in that colour there, I'll put that in the pot and that in the pot so I remember to wash them, put my brush in the pot so I'm just taking this medium sized brush and I'm just going to wobble it around, I'm filling it with paint and I'm just wobbling it like that to make some uh, distant hills and I'm not going for a really bright green because it wouldn't look right so the strong colors are down the front here and by flipping the brush around I'm getting a pattern of light and dark and if you really want to you can do a dry brush technique or you can layer it in thick and leave spots here and there for the dark to show through. I've got my eyes half closed here. I'm trying to work out a, a way of seeing it without having to look at the, the picture too, too closely. They do have um, columns of, of trees coming down to the sand. So I've got to remember to tie it down, tie the, the nature of the trees down like that. Okay. I'm tempted to put some whitish, whiter, uh, a grey, a, 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 how can I say it? 
I'm tempted to lighten these rocks in the foreground using whatever I've got while that brown is still wet. Well, it's half dry at this stage. Okay. So now you can see, now you can see how I managed to get all my um, hands so dirty. So at the moment I've got a, I'll put them over here so you can see them. I'm not worrying about my water because when I'm, when I'm out and about I tend to have to stick with the one lot of water all the way through. So I, I don't have the luxury of being able to go and paint, um, change water too often. So at the moment I've got this purple colour which I like. I'm going to put some, I'm going to clean up some of these plates. So I'm going to put the yellow in with the purple see what happens there that could make an interesting gray because I'm looking for a light gray to go onto these rocks down here that's pretty much exactly what I need now that I look at it and I'm going to use the palette knife for the shapes so I can get some I need sharp edges I want corners and what better way to do it than by using a sharp palette knife. And a bit random. Some down the front, right down there. Just to come out over the edge. Basically, just putting a bit of light on the top edge of each of those rocks. Not much left here now. Just take it all the way back. Make the rocks, of course, smaller at the back. Okay, so I've, in some cases, I've probably got a little bit same same. So you have to vary it so that you have some bigger and some smaller. That will be enough. just wash some of these off so that they dry a bit faster. Is that why I'm washing them? Not really, just... Give me a minute and I'll just wash these plates. end up in a terrible mess. This is why I like paper plates. They're so much easier to manage. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse my back. Okay. Just use a rag to clean those off with one done. I've got to remember not to use this rag for a while. <laughs> it's pretty full of paint. Toss out tissues that are in the bottom of the pot. I'll just wet that rag up now, really do the edges of that plate. So for the sake of reusing things, plastic is definitely easiest, but if you want to toss them out, paper plates. While I'm here, um, I'm just thinking the background, as much as on the photograph, 
the yellow light really does make a difference to the... Um, I just think I've made those two green. I'd like to make them bluer. And uh, I think the best way to do that would be to leave that colour. I could leave that colour there and come over it later with um, a slightly bluer, a bluer tint or a mm, bit of brown in there. From the looks of it, there's been a bit of a bushfire back there, which is not unusual at the moment. So, it's getting down to finessing, finessing time. Of course, I'm leaving the tree till last. I, if I, once I put the tree in, I can't go back and do any of this sky, which now is quite dry. Uh, that's dry. So I can go through and finish off, finalise what colour I really want that sky to be. And I, now that I've got clean, clean um, plates, I can go back into the colour here and choose the right, the right colour that I want. And I think it's going to be the cerulean blue. So I pull out some of that and on the other side I'll pull out some white. And wipe those off. Close the pot. And grab my big brush. Mix up the right tone. Sometimes I just have to make sure that I've properly cleaned my brush. Double check that. Yep, okay. I think I've got a tractor or someone else outside doing some work. Hmm. I think this is the right colour for down here. Quite happy with that down there. A bit more white on the bottom of the little lump. Going up to this colour. And then going a little bit up into this one. And then a couple of horizontal lines that make it look watery. But now that I look at the top, I really do need to go to a little bit of the um, ultramarine blue, which is the pinkier blue. So I'll take out some of that. Wipe that off. In, in actually looking at the photograph, I now can see there's clouds all behind, but I won't bother putting those in. That's just gonna get too complicated. So I'll mix some of the ultramarine blue with that cerulean blue and white and I'll just start popping that in there and just see how that looks. Feel a bit Bob, Bob Rossi here. Okay. Keep mixing white with the blue until I get the right shade but I know the white is what's going to really come out at the base, it's going to make it work. Definitely a half and half blue this one, cerulean and um, ultra, ultramarine, which means if I had cobalt, cobalt would have been a good colour on. Okay. The fun of it. Come in the clouds. Down there, that side. Oops. Blue, cerulean, and ultramarine. Yep, 
That's good enough. As a, as a medium, I'm only using water. One of the reasons being is I've already put medium into this paint to make it um, the toothbrush consistency that I like anyway. Actually, I'll go right over that. Sometimes getting a smooth background is, is the best way, is just to repaint over things. Get the background all smooth and neat and tidy, and then you can come back with the messy clouds. Interestingly enough, it's going quite pale down there in the sky, so I'm going to have to lighten that up quite a bit to make that look anything like the photograph. And this is where when you're working outside with plein air, you really do have to work at speeds because of the uh, changing light. And it always help, helps to photograph when you first arrive, always take a picture because that's what you're painting, what you, what you see when you first come. There's not very many people who can totally predict what, what's going to happen and start painting for the future. So you paint for what you're looking at and that's when it becomes a little bit sad when you go, oh, it's gone. That shadow's not there anymore or that highlight's gone. But if you get a photograph of it, that's, that's good. Uh, it's my style of paint, a cloud. I like to just do a straight across the bottom like that. Now I've got this blue mixed up, but it's not quite the right blue for these. As I said before, I wanted to knock back the mountains. So I'll just grab a little bit more of the um, ultramarine blue. Mix it with a lot of white. Sometimes you have to put a bit of something else in there to make it look right. And for me, I will sometimes add a touch of red, orangey red. And that knocks it back to a lovely neutral, sort of a bluey grey. So I'm going to touch it over that green. not going to get rid of the green altogether I'm just going to add the blue in so that it becomes more distant misty Got no idea what my neighbor's doing but it's noisy Add a little, this is just a bit of experiment. I'm just putting, because I've got blue on the brush here, just going to try putting it onto the shadowy side there like that. And bring the shadows down into a darker color. That makes it a little bit more interesting. So each, each layer you can see through to the layer below. So that enriches the picture. You don't totally cover what's underneath. You let that peek through that dark blacky colour I had on before. So just there, that's going to be all coloured in with the new tree that goes over the top. Okay, let's see what else I can do here with this blue. Just going to smudge it in here and there, make it look like it's part of the shadows coming down. need to differentiate this colour here to that colour behind. I think the only way of doing that is by adding some white. So I've just got a clean brush so I can go straight into the white and just put it on the top of this landform. 
so that it looks like it stands out separate to the beach behind. The problem with this is that I was photographing, it, this is eye height, so eye height over there, this is obviously the horizon behind these mountains is at my height I'm looking at. I'm just going to close that window. This lovely white is going to blend in with what's underneath and form a part of this path coming down. You can ride your bike all the way out or walk out there, it's good fun. Okay, blend it in. Okay. It's a simple scene but there's a lot in this. It's, it, you can make it very, very complex. But that said, Just looking at these clouds, which I shall probably play around with a little bit more, get more white, because they are pure white. I love pure white clouds. So I'm just going to brighten the tops of them. That'll do. Now I'll take a little bit of the um, chrome yellow. Mm, I haven't used any magenta pink yet. I'll just see what, what pretty shades I can get with it. Just mix these colours in with the white. I'm looking for nice warm colour to the top of some of those rocks. Probably better off if I if I use the um, palette knife because it's um, I'm going to need a sharp edge now that I've got a dirty knife to go back into the white I'll clean that off so as I do my trip down to Tasmania our trip to Tassie Bob and myself and honey I shall be using these paints and you'll see how long they'll last me. Put some corners on there. Back here there's some spots where the sun is shining. Oh there I was going to use that palette knife and I ended up using the corner of this. Mm, a few vertical little objects on the end of that. Doesn't hurt to put them down into the water as well. Now I'm going to start with, apart from a bit more grass here and there, oops, okay, that's all right, I don't mind that. So this is the warmth at the front that I like to add while I'm here. If I can get this down first underneath then I won't have to come back on that. Oops. Just make some random shapes that are the top of the thing, the rocks. Okay. I'm cleaning off the brush. Now the, the fun part starts. Of course, I'm going to put the um, brown and a bit of violet, a bit of ultramarine blue as well. So I'm going to mix up a beautiful dark colour here. That will be the shady side of the tree, almost black. I'm not going to use black because that's a bit boring. <coughs> Black tends to have a, I don't know what they, what colours they put together to make a black, but probably Google it. It's for some reason always boring. 
what will I use? I'll go back through my old brushes to see what would be suitable for a tree. I need something really, really thin sideways wise. And, um, to decide. Mm, I might use a real, I still want to stick with a big, well, there's some, there's some other, I could still use that. In fact, just for the fun of it, just to try and see how I go. Assuming I've gone out on a painting trip and I've only bought the one brush. So sometimes you can get very lovely thin marks with just using the edge of these flat brushes. So there's a fair bit of action happening above the, the, above the uh, horizon. Just be random. I don't have to be too exact. Don't have to overdo it either. That's another possible. If I go too strong. I'm going to decide where to bring the tree down. It is around about here, but I've already gone a bit over there. So I think I'll bring it down to here at that point. The paint underneath is still a bit wet. I'd prefer it to be drier, but I'm just so impatient, I can't wait. <laughs> this is the fun part. So what happens when it's too wet is it pushes the, it mixes with what's underneath. So that means it's mixing with the white that's underneath there and the lighter tones. Not the end of the world because you can end up getting some nice textures. Okay, so using that same dark colour, I'm going to start putting in some of the, the um, areas of where the, I think the leaves should be. And this is like the shadow, this is the back of the bunches. A bit more there. Now there's going to be a fair bit down here. Okay, this is where it's still very light. I'm still very, um, what do you call it? Wet, <laughs> not dry. Right, over here, I just, I've got some leftover green from behind. This is gonna be a perfect color for the mid-tone of, of these branch areas. So I'm going straight over the top of the black, hoping it will mix in. That's the whole idea. I'll leave a little bit. And then it gets quite light there. And luckily I've just happened to have some white, oops, some red. That area. Mm. Might have to come back later and lighten that up. Cause it's, cause it's still so wet. So I'm doing some vertical strokes now to try and give the feeling of the, uh, and when, now that I look at it, there's a lot more light on this side where the sun is. So I'll concentrate the green side over here. And I'll let that darker green be there. Um, in fact, I might just go back to the, I'll go back mixing the green with the dark color. Knock out some of that lightness. Way too much brevity. Okay, that's going good. So the next stage is, apart from letting it dry, which I should really do, come back to it. I'm too impatient. I'm going to be, uh, I'll mix up some good color here, a good um, light green. Nearly contaminated that green with my enthusiasm. So I'll, just, I'll grab the green out of the pot that I've already got there. I think it's a terra vert green colour. It's just mid green. I'll put some yellow with it. So I'm going to mix that together. So, 
make more yellow. When I look at it, I think there's more yellow in the, um, the warmish yellow. I'll put the warmer yellow in to see how that goes. <laughs> Good fun. Random, not mixed up too well, which is I rather like. Now I'm going to just use the uh, palette knife to paint some areas of green. And I'm, because of this colour, this is going to be on the sunny side of each bunch of leaves. Keeping vertical slightly, I guess you'd call it like rectangles, so I'm keeping as vertical a stroke as I can. Now, then you go back over the, your own trunk with some leaves. That's how you make it look a little bit more realistic. Cover the trunk. I'm going to put some down here. Now because it's wet underneath, I just have to be a bit careful that I'm not mixing it too much. I just want to sit on the surface. There's greenery here in the, on the ground, slightly different green. So I'll just mix it to be a little bit richer, which means I think I'll add some cerulean blue to the mix. And the cadmium medium yellow. So I'm going to make that a stronger greener green because it's at the foreground and that means it's a stronger more fun color and not mixed thoroughly just half mixed so you get a little bit of the yellow a little bit of the blue coming through Now, hmm, just want the purple down the front here. Oh, that might be too much. I might not need that much. Flip the lid. Just want to mix the purple in with this green to try and get a very dark shadow, which I will run over the edge like that. And I'll mix it all together. Fill this area in down here. Some more dark over this side. Can't be sure what I've got over there. I think it's more rocks actually. So it's a bit interesting to see that there's more rocks on that side. I'll just put a random. Okay, so. Of course we've got grass here. Can't get by without that. To what extent then I need to add more interesting colours up here, I don't know. I'll just have to just experiment and see. I'll put them in. A few vertical, I'm just doing vertical shapes at this stage to give that tree feel. It's more like from a distance so that you're from a distance you think, oh that's their branches, their leaves. Even though up close there's nothing like it. Okay, some interesting work to be done on the actual branches of the tree itself because that needs to have the highlight on the sunny side added and I shall choose, 
I'll choose the warm plate here because I've already got some red on it, but I'll need to add yellow. I think I'll need to add lemon yellow. I don't know why, I think it's because I've already got so much red there. So I'm mixing up a warm colour. I'll, wait, I'll tell you in a minute what I end up with. No idea at this stage. Um, often when I mix up colour like this and I end up with a fair bit of it, I will add it to another. I have a, um, a couple of spare little pots. I'll show you. I, I like to keep one of these handy, just a small one, and that way I can put the any spare bits that I've mixed up that I've got a fair bit of and I don't want to throw it out. I'll put them in a pot like that and I know I can go out with it the next day and probably use it up because it's going to be the right colours. Um, now, what was I thinking? I was at the stage where I was mixing up the warm colour. I'm going to end up with a fair bit, probably more than I need, but I do want to get it very white. Hmm, I think I need to go more yellow. So this probably will end up having, this will be a leftover patch of colour that I will keep. That's about it. I think I want that colour there. A bit more yellow here. I can scrape into it. Now, because I want to be fairly exact, oh, here we go. This might be an opportunity to get the trusty rigger. So I just wet it and rub it into that area of paint, try and pick up a certain quantity, not too much, not, not too little. Now I'm going to use it as a sort of a, a white pencil and draw down. It'll be just the right consistency to work with the rigger. If it's got no strength in itself, so it's got to be almost like ink. So I'm, I'm constantly adding more and more um, white to this, not white, water to this uh, mixture I've got to make it just the right consistency for my rigger, which is going to go follow the tree down. I'm painting on the left side so that the, uh, the sun is capturing the branches. Sometimes I can make up a little bit in there. It's, there's no dark side to it if I think I need to put a bit more on. Oops. Just thickening it down there. Yeah, I would really like this tree to be, I'll, I'll jump into a brush just to be fast. I really want this tree to be fatter than what it is at the base. I want it to be a really big trunk at the base of this tree. So I'll just chase that out like that. And then once again, using this lovely um, flesh tone, I mix a touch of white with it and bring over here and put tiny little what could be rocks or sticks or stones on the path behind. Just adds a little bit of contrast. And the random way that this paintbrush behaves, that's what helps make, a, make the patterns. So you just crisscross it. Dab it crisscross. Putting a bit more white on here. Oops, probably more than I need to, but that's all right. It's on the right side. I might just put some, what looks like um, grass growing up between those shadow areas. <laughs> oh, I'm not watching what I'm doing. I'm taking up too much paint. Okay, it's a few more lovely long 
while I'm at it, I'll wash the brush really well so I can dip into, mm, I think I'll go the warm yellow and add that in. Right, now that I've got that warm yellow and that white on here and I can just start putting in some very warm branch um, um, uh, leaves hanging off this tree. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, just random numbers of leaves. Put them in bunches, don't have them one, two, three like that. Have them in little groups as if the sun's just caught them as it's dipping down. And, so, and once again, it's on the sunny side of, the, of each bunch. I'm going to come back here and make this a little bit darker. I think that needs to be stronger in relationship to the strength down here. Which brings me down to these rocks down here and whether any of them need a little bit of help with a little bit of a flick of grass that might be growing out of them and the sun might have caught it. Definitely more across the base of that tree. Right. Okay, that's enough of that. You can see I'm beginning to uh, go a bit silly. On this water here, there's a couple of big heavy rocks that need to go out and I'm going to definitely leave that till it's dry. Uh, which means I might come down after dinner. <laughs> it's nearly dinner. So what I've just done is gone straight into the purple. I'm not going to bother mixing it on a, on a plate because I know that purple will be just the perfect colour to put in these um, leaves that are total shade on the far side of the tree. And not just on that side of the tree, but on the right hand side of some of these bunches. Oops. Every now and then a hair will break free. Escape. So. Oops, there it goes. A little bit in here, looking behind the tree. Okay, I'll stop that at that stage. And okay. just get some blue. So I've, I've got some purple here on this brush. And I'll just take a little bit of liberty in pulling out some of that um, reflect, basically just dark. A bit more purple. Gives the, that helps with the feeling that the water's going back into the distance. And just because I can't help myself, I'm going to have a go at putting these big rocks in here that are just sitting out there waiting to be put in. There's that one. There's another little one there. Not necessarily matching exactly where they are in the photograph. And check the battery. Battery's all right. Hmm. Interestingly enough, down in these rocks down here, there are a couple that have caught the light, but I don't think I'll put them in at this stage. Kind of thinking I don't need to do that. So I'm, at the moment I'm in trouble because I've got one, two, three, four, all equal distance. That's very naughty of me. So I'm going to just add another one there. 
and oh, what is happening? Sorry, I've got to go and stop that. Yep, bad girl. So these, I'm putting these in at a very. Um, these are very black rocks at this stage. Uh, I'll make that one bigger. So all I can do is make one of them bigger and put mm, small, double, medium. I'll just make that like there. Okay. And just for the fun of it, I know there's one right in there. So to make it small. Right. Now, I'm going to just add a tiny bit of lightness to the tops of those by putting a touch of white in with the purple. Oh, I'll mix some of this green in. Any colour that can knock back a pure colour. You don't want any pure colours. You want to add their opposites every now and then. Just put over the top. Just to give it that tiny bit of... There's a bit of white on that. A bit of yellow, white. Just to give a bit of interest. Otherwise it doesn't look right. Back there they're kind of... It's a little bit too... Um, what's the word? De too far away for detail. So don't bother with that. Okay, pretty right. Kind of wishing I'd gone lighter on that sky now that I'm looking at it, but not too bad. I think also what I could do, grab a tiny bit of brown, is be a little bit more solid on these branches here. Just to define them a little bit more so that you can't see through them too much. Some of them you can have as a, a gesture and others you want to make pretty solid so that they really exist. Especially down towards the trunk itself. So I just bury that down into the ground. Stuff over it. And rocks at the back. Oops. I'll go back to black for those. Of course they're going to be, the shady side's going to be facing us. Few dabs. Hmm. Up here, I can see there's need for some attention for the shadows to be coming over the edge. I'm being a bit naughty dipping in. There's, I've got plenty of white back here, so I just put a few little dabs. Make it look like it's coming down. Oh, actually, now that I, I can see it, it, turns the corner and there are some quite light little areas there on those rocks. Okay. I could keep fiddling, but this, this is just a start, really, just to give you an idea of how I do my plein air. I don't always have an easel. I often am working on the ground and often I'm working on paper that's been stuck onto a canvas because it's easy to keep uh, rolling up the paper and storing it in the motorhome. So this along here behind. Okay. Right. So I think I'll call it quits. I could play a little bit more with lightening that sky behind. Uh, I'm not sure that I need to at this stage. I think that works okay. Hmm. Maybe it could be done. Just to show you, in case you wanted to do it yourself, you can download this, this um, photograph, by the way, from my website. But what I'm gonna do, just in the corner of this page, this one for no reason. Just have it happened to have it in my hand. Just going to have a go at putting in a little bit of the lightness behind there. Just to see what happens. So I'm painting it into the tree. Yeah. 
And then uh, theoretically, I should be uh, getting darker as I get to the top. Pity I haven't already got some of this paint out. And I'm being very naughty, I'm just dabbing straight into the paint. Which, don't do. Don't do as I do, do as I say, just don't do that. Okay. So I'm just knocking that back down again. Of course it's in amongst the tree. I feel I've got the, I can play around there with the lightness of the sky. Maybe that might have helped by putting those clouds in. If I was to paint this again, I'd probably put those clouds in behind there and then let them dry and then paint the tree over the top. But it's a loose painting. You can get away with doing that sort of thing. So I'll stop at that point. When it's totally dry, I'd love to come back and put a bit more white over here and a bit more white over here. But if I do it now, I, I run the risk of messing it up. So I thought, well, if I stop it, you can see how, how the painting looks and uh, have a go yourself. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you, and hit the bell to be notified of the next time I upload a video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Okay, I might sign it. I hear my dad's voice all the time. Sign every painting, he used to say. Don't ever not sign. Because occasionally I'd give him a work that I hadn't signed and he'd get a bit annoyed with me. So I will sign this. And of course, it's for sale. So if anyone wants to buy it, please feel free. Just shoot me an email. Or I'll put it, what I might do is put it on my website. So you can have a look at it there and decide if you'd like to buy one of my paintings. Oops. And uh, I often um, have them for, with, within Australia, um, free shipping especially the, the, uh, the, the paper ones. But I'll have a think about this. I'll let you know. There you go. There's my signature <laughs> for what it's worth. So, that is... Um, what would you say? Northern, Northern Beaches, New South Wales. Thank you. Okay, what I can see is a problem here is this corner there. That's not working at all. So I'm going to go into greeny. Oops. I'm going to get some green on my brush and some purple on my brush and mix those two together. And what I have to do is take this tree, because of this big shadow the tree is forming, this tree needs to be bigger than what I've painted it. So I'm going to go into this area here and just add some more tree shapes that will be, or leaf shapes, I guess you'd call them, much more stronger than I had before. I'll drop it down. I'll come over here a bit. I'll put some branches going up. I'm using just the bluey green colour for all this. Don't need to go into any other. Although, I must admit, I kind of like the idea of putting a little bit of red brown in there. Aussie trees always look good with a bit of redness in them. Just thickening up, thickening up the tree because of this shadow. I really want to make it more solid. So it's not until I finish a painting and I stand back and I've decided it's finished, then I see so many things that I want to change. Luckily I can. Okay, that's a lot better. It's made that tree look much stronger. Get the green parts into it.
It's very vague in there. I'm not quite happy with that. I think what I need to do there is to go back in maybe with a bit of the path that is behind there. A bit of redness into it, which I'll have to match somewhere else. Otherwise it won't work. I'm just using up my scraps really. A bit more white, pinch it out. Same as on the background there. Oops. Just to thin out the tree at that point. I think that works. For a couple of rocks coming down the hill in that particular spot there. For no reason. So now I've got to be careful I don't overdo it. I just wanted to add a little bit more um, white to the um, just going to add a little bit more white to the um, around the rocks area like this just because that's what happens you get a, a touch of um, use my finger uh, you get a touch of, of light I think a smaller brush might be more suitable let's we'll see how I go with this one I'm choosing a brush that's got a little point on it so just see how this this light goes around. It's quite dark and so I'm just thinking of ways of lightening it up. That's the light uh, reflecting from the sky. It's the little meniscus that um, sits at the side of the water as the water touches things. So you often get a white edge. Now I'm just a little bit thinking I might just bring this pattern down a little bit like this. I don't want it to overpower, so I'll just see how I go smoothing that out. And the beauty of once it's, this is, this is dry, this is working on the dry painting. The beauty of this is that I can, if I don't like it, I can just wipe it off. So I just thought I'd experiment and see how I can go dry, lightening that. Now that's supposed to be the shadow from over there, but I just didn't think it worked all that well. There's a lot of activity around these rocks from the ref refracted, the refraction of the um, waves. Keep the right, um, what's the word, uh, perspective as well. You can't do a circle, it has to be an oval. Honestly, you can have so much fun playing with, uh, <laughs> with water. I'll leave it there. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for uh, watching me paint this uh, uh, acrylic on canvas, northern beaches. Mm, I say north, north coast of New South Wales. 
and to tell you the truth, I took the photo, but I can't for the life of me remember where it was. But I'll have it in the link down below. Also, on my website, you'll be able to download the actual uh, photograph. So if you want to paint it in your own time, you can. And um, so thanks again. <laughs> uh, hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell. Three things, unless you're already subscribing. Thanks so much for coming back. See you next time.